After Effects comes with several cool audio effects you can use to enhance the quality of your audio and also do some other audio tricks as well. So in this movie we'll be using the audio effects project found in the chapter 18 folder to go through a little quick tour of what's available here. If we go to the effects and presets panel, there's actually an audio category of effects. We can open up audio to see all of them. Now whether your thing is music or dialogue, reverb is one of those things that will probably be used the most. Reverb is like a very, very small echo that tends to create a more full audio tone. I'll start by applying reverb to the bass guitar track. Let's go ahead and solo this audio track so this is all we hear when we play back our audio. Here's what it sounds like after the reverb has been applied. We're going to preview this using the period key on the numeric keypad. Let's go ahead and click in the uh, FX icon for the reverb effect to turn it off. So this is the original track. It sounds much more fake and digital and weak. And again, add a little reverb. It sounds like it's being recorded in a big room. I kind of like the sound as is, but let's go ahead and apply reverb to our drum track. And I turned off the solo of the bass guitar, and I'm going to turn on the solo of the drums. Let's listen to the drums before the reverb. I'm going to turn off reverb. Here's before. And here's the drum track with reverb with the default settings. And as you can tell, it's a little overboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take down the reverb time just a little bit. As I mentioned before, reverb is like a small echo. The reverb time is the time in milliseconds that is used for the delay. Now let's go down here to dry out and wet out. These are two properties that you will see in most audio effects. Dry refers to the original signal, the original audio track, and wet refers to the audio track with the effect. So right now, 90% of the signal is being made up of the original signal, and 10% is being made up of the signal with the effect. So I'm going to take down wet out to about 3 or so, and let's preview the audio track again. Definitely more subdued. If we took this down to 1%, it would be even more subtle. And let's try taking this to 2. I think there, that's going to be the perfect balance. And just by way of comparison, let's turn off reverb and preview it without reverb. So big difference here. Now we're getting a little bit of distortion here, but that's kind of what I'm looking for. One other effect that you might use is the backwards effect. This does exactly what it sounds like. It plays a clip backwards. This also acts as if you had like a record, an old school record, and you were actually playing it backwards with the that whole thing with the psychedelic effects and stuff. So let's go ahead and add the backwards effect to this drum track. And now let's preview it and hear what that sounds like. So it sounds kind of weird, but actually when you play it back with everything, it sounds kind of cool. Kind of weird, kind of psychedelic, kind of fun. Now there's all sorts of other effects here, such as parametric EQ for balancing treble tones versus bass tones. Also bass and treble for boosting bass and treble tones. There's also special effects such as delay and flange and chorus. And there's another interesting effect I want to show you called tone. To do this, I am going to create a new composition in the project panel by going to this button, the create a new composition button. You can also use the keyboard shortcut command N or control N on the PC. Any size is fine. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm actually going to create a new solid layer. I'm going to hit command Y or control Y on the PC. Doesn't matter what color it is. I'm going to hit OK. Obviously, this is a visual layer. But tone is an effect that you can apply to a visual layer, which is interesting. As you can see here, we've actually added audio to this visual layer, to the solid layer. If I hit the period key, we can hear what that sounds like. As you can tell, it's not too awesome. What this is is just a series of tones, a series of frequencies being played back at the same time. Now, if you are an audio master, knock yourself out. Play with these frequencies, come up with songs or whatever you do. But for the rest of us, you can go to this animation presets drop down at the top, and you can see there's actually several animation presets that ship with After Effects for this effect. Let's say, for example, Blaster. So if I preview that, you can see there's like a little blaster sound. I'm going to undo that, hitting Command Z. And maybe you're making a movie where somebody's making a phone call, and you don't have a good stock audio phone sound. I can click Call Adobe, and it calls a number. The benefit of using this over a stock audio clip is also that there's no compression. These tones are being generated from scratch with this effect, so you can increase the volume or decrease the volume 
and you don't have to worry about any problems resulting from audio compression. I'm going to undo that and you could also go to, let's say for example, a dial tone. So those are the basics of the audio effects and after effects. In the next chapter, we're going to be taking things a little bit further with audio, using audio with expressions.